Welcome to section 3 in gastrointestinal anatomy. In this section, we will discuss the rectum and the pectinate line. Let's get started. The pectinate, or dentate line, demarcates the hindgut, which is endoderm, from the skin, which is ectoderm. And this line is very important because the innervation, vascular supply, and lymphatics differ above and below the line. By looking at this image, we see the pectinate line. Above is the hindgut, which is endoderm, and below is the skin, which is derived from the ectoderm. I emphasize the endoderm versus the ectoderm simply to help you realize that both spaces have a different embryologic origin. If their embryologic origin is different, it makes sense that the nerves, arteries, veins, and lymphatics would also differ between these two areas. Let's first focus on the nerves. Above the line receives visceral innervation, labeled here. This means that hemorrhoids or other lesions above the line are painless. The area below the line receives somatic innervation, as labeled here. This means that hemorrhoids or other lesions here would be painful. And that's because somatic nerves transmit pain. Next, let's focus on the arteries. Blood above the line comes from the superior rectal artery, which is a branch of the inferior mesenteric artery. This image can be found in cardiovascular anatomy. And right now, I want to draw your attention to the rectum. So the rectum, right here. This line here can demarcate the pectinate line. Above the line, you can see the superior rectal artery. This is a branch of the IMA, which is labeled right here. Notice that below the line, you can see the inferior rectal artery. And this is a branch of the internal pudendal artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery, which you can see right here. So we showed the arteries above the line and below the line. Notice that the superior rectal vein actually drains into the portal system through the inferior mesenteric vein. So superior rectal vein goes to the portal network. But below, the inferior rectal vein actually travels through the internal pudendal vein, which means it travels into the internal iliac vein and ultimately goes to the IVC, so outside the portal network. Now this image can be found in the cardiovascular anatomy chapter. Notice the superior rectal vein right here, which drains into the inferior mesenteric vein. And following it up, you can see that it drains into the splenic vein, right here, and the splenic vein joins with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. And then the blood continues to the liver to get filtered. Now let's talk about the lymph. Lymph above the pectinate line drains into the internal iliac lymph nodes, while lymph below the pectinate line drains to the superficial inguinal nodes. So we just stated that below the pectinate line, lymph drains to the superficial inguinal nodes. And we can see the inguinal lymph nodes labeled right here. And we stated that above the pectinate line, lymph drains to the internal iliac nodes. And these internal iliac nodes are located within this pelvic system of lymph nodes. So now that we've covered the arteries, veins, lymphatics, and the innervation, let's do a question to apply what you've learned so far. A 32-year-old pregnant woman complains of rectal pain during each bowel movement. She endorses the presence of blood on the toilet paper following each episode. Assuming her presentation is caused by a hemorrhoid, the blood likely originated from what vessel? Hopefully you notice that this woman's hemorrhoids are painful, with the rectal pain during each bowel movement. And since we're talking about painful hemorrhoids, are these above or below the pectinate line? Well, they must be below the pectinate line. Because after all, to have pain, there must be somatic innervation. Going back to this image, we see that below the line, receives somatic innervation, which leads to the pain. But the question asks, assuming her presentation is caused by a hemorrhoid, the blood likely originated from what vessel? Since hemorrhoids are a venous pathology, we're looking at the inferior rectal vein, which answers our question, the inferior rectal vein. And going back to this image, we can see the inferior rectal vein right here, which would drain the blood below the pectinate line. Now this table summarizes the information we just presented in this discussion. In it, you will find the important information, such as the innervation, the arterial supply, the venous supply, and lymphatics above and below the pectinate line. Now I want to draw your attention to the pathology column over here. Rectal cancer above the pectinate line would be adenocarcinoma, while rectal cancer below the pectinate line would be squamous cell carcinoma. Now why would adenocarcinoma happen above the line, but squamous cell carcinoma below? Now this will be intuitive when you think about it in this way. Earlier in the lecture, we discussed that below the pectinate line is cutaneous. Therefore, it will have squamous cells. Recall that skin is composed of stratified squamous epithelium with keratin. So a cancer in this region would be squamous cell carcinoma. I'll just write SCC. Conversely, colorectal cancers are adenocarcinomas. So if you look at this line, and you think of above this line being a part of the rectum that is much like the rest of the colon, then you can think of colon cancer. 
and colon cancer is adenocarcinoma, and that's because of the type of tissue that it is. So colorectal cancer is adenocarcinoma, so rectal cancer above the pectinate line would also be adenocarcinoma. So again, adenocarcinoma above the pectinate line, squamous cell carcinoma below. Now, hemorrhoids obviously count as pathology, but not to worry, they're still included on this table. Just look at the nerve supply. Above the pectinate line receives visceral innervation, therefore, they're painless hemorrhoids. And below the pectinate line is somatic innervation, therefore, it's painful. Now let's do one question before we finish this lecture. A 65-year-old male presents with weight loss and bloody stools. He denies rectal pain but states that defecation has recently become more difficult. He has not had any colonoscopies in his life. Imaging reveals a rectal mass. If the mass is malignant rectal cancer, what lymph nodes will most likely be affected by early metastatic disease? Hopefully you notice that the rectal cancer has not produced pain. This makes cancer above the pectinate line more likely, which of course would be adenocarcinoma. And the question stem states that he has not had any colonoscopies in his life. And this raises the suspicion of colorectal adenocarcinoma. But the question asks what lymph nodes will most likely be affected by early metastatic disease. Where does lymph above the pectinate line drain to? The internal iliac nodes. Recall from this image that above the pectinate line, lymph drains to the internal iliac lymph nodes. And in this image, we can see the pelvic lymph nodes. And within the pelvic lymph nodes are the internal iliac nodes. And that concludes this section.